All right, the way this is going to work is the first half of the semester, we're going to spend a lot of time on the thesis writing, right? So we're going to practice writing for one thing. We're going to do a lot of practicing. And on the other hand, what we're going to do is practice tools. This week, we're going to begin with a Gantt project. That's a tool. And then we're also going to do something really, really, very, very boring. And that is every week we're going to in detail go over some of the APA. Not all of it because it's too huge, but we're going to try to cover a lot of it actually. So this stuff is really boring. There's no way I can make it exciting. Okay? I'm really sorry. There's no way I can make this book exciting. All right? This book is like really boring. But the key point I want to make to you about this book is you see how thick this book is, right? It's really huge. And that is because this book covers every detail of how to write your thesis. Style, the, not, not the content, but the style. So when you go online and you Google how to make a reference or you Google how to do something, you're doing it wrong because that is not going to help you find the overall style rules. Everything is here. So I want to first of all check everybody has a copy, right? Yeah? Okay, because today we're going to go over this. Okay, so you must be prepared. I'm telling you, be prepared for the next, the next many weeks. We're going to be going over this in detail and you're going to be kind of uh, bored by it but I ask you to be patient and stick with me because it's super important. Okay? The other thing we're going to go over is the uh, thesis book, Writing Your Thesis. Actually, that was called Writing Your PhD Thesis, but that's just like writing Taiwan's graduate thesis, although your, your topic is not so special. So today I want to begin by going over a little bit of that book first. So let's begin because I want to go over the Gantt. So let's begin by looking at this, uh, this other book here, our writing the dissertation, writing the thesis. Okay, so let's everybody see if we can open that book. This is a tiny little book. This is not a big book, is it? It's very tiny, it's very easy to, uh, whoops, that's the wrong one. I want to get the other one, which is, mm, where is it, here, 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 there we go, that's it. Okay. I want you to come down to this page here, I'm not sure what page that number that is, I can't quite make it out. It's one of the first uh, graphics, one of the first figures in the book, and it's got a timeline on it. So let's all see if we can find this uh, picture. Somebody can yell out the page number when you find it. Sixteen, page sixteen in the book, which is in the in the in the PDF is twenty three. Okay, now you can use your program to turn that clockwise or whatever. I'm just going to leave it here. It's too much trouble for me to change. But I really like this graphic because this graphic is very, very clear in what it's telling us. So let's take a, t let's take a look at this and see what's it saying. On the y-axis is percentage of total sample in page length category. And in the x axis is the page length, right? So what we're saying in this uh, graph, it's kind of a distribution, right? It's kind of a distribution graph. And what this is showing us is inside of all of the dissertations written, all the dissertation written, we could say that 5% fall within the 
50 page length. And another 5% are in the 400 page length. Right? I'm gonna follow me maybe over, over here, right? 5% here, 5% here, right? Yeah, everybody got that? How about 20%? 20% fall within the 100 page length and another 20% over here are in the 350 and up page length. So 20% here, 20% here, that's a total of 40%, right? So if we look at the majority of the papers, they fall somewhere in here, which is in the 100 to 300 page length. Now for your master thesis, of course, you're not doing a doctoral uh, dissertation, but I would say actually this is not so far off. Most of the, of the master thesis fall within the 100 to 200 page length. So I would just move this over maybe one standard deviation. So this gives you a good idea, I think, of how much writing you're going to be doing. I rarely see a master thesis that's under um, 80 pages. That's unusual because you have to have your references. You have to have some of your figures. You have to have your table of contents. You have to have your table of figures, table of tables, and all of these things. That takes up a lot of space just right there. So uh, a thesis that would be under 20 pages would be impossible. That's like a, that's like a book report. Uh, over 300 pages would be very unusual. You're wasting space somehow, doing something wrong. Uh, so I think that if you just took this over one standard deviation, that would be just about right for what's normal in our Taiwan master thesis. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to look at today. I think that's really awesome, little easy to understand picture, right? Now let's go ahead and uh, look at something else here. Let me jump down to the next page. And we have the next uh, figure, which is pretty cool looking. This is the kind of the same idea, only laid out a little bit different. So what do we have on the y-axis? Percentage of dissertations less than this length, right? And on the x-axis, what do we have? Length, that's page length, right? So this helps us understand a little bit more generalization. 90% of dissertations are between 110 and 450 pages. So like I said, that's for a doctoral dissertation. Probably for the master degree in Taiwan, one standard deviation over would probably be about correct. We don't know what the SD here is. They don't give us the standard deviation, but we can kind of guess. It's probably, what do you think the standard deviation is? Can someone tell me what the standard deviation is? You should be able to guess. Three standard deviations should capture, what, 95%, right? So can you guess what the standard deviation is? All of our math geniuses. No. Well, wait a minute. Is it that hard? It shouldn't be that hard, right? It tells you right there 90% is within 110 and 450, right? So 450 captures 90%, right? Because he's saying 90% is between 110 and 450. That's because hardly anybody's below 110, right? So uh, 450 captures 90%. So that should be at least. Uh, three standard deviations, right? So 450 divided by one, two, three standard deviations this way, one, two, three standard deviations that way. One, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> divided by six, right? Because it's one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> right? Hello? <laughs> no? Right. I don't know, I'm gonna guess around 50. 
I'm going to think standard deviation is around 50. Right? We don't know for sure. Okay, uh, you can see that the uh, median is 225. Did they tell what the mean is? Where's the mean? Was the mean in the last chart? Yeah, the mean was in the last chart. The mean is 225 and the median is 240. So if the, what does that tell you? If the mean is 240 and the median is 225, that tells you that there's some, ex some uh, variance at the extreme ends, right? When the dissertation is long, it's really long. That's what that, and you can see it in the chart. If you look at the picture on the last page, the tail is long on the right side. So that's what that tells us. Okay, so if we look here, maybe I'm saying we should standard deviation go over. And because standard, we're talking about standard deviations, three standard deviations this way, three standard deviations that way. But anyway, uh, if each one is about 50, and you need to go over one, you go over one this way, go over one this way, that's about 100 pages. So, you know, just shift it over about a, a 100 pages. So maybe the longest master dissertation, instead of being 450, would be 350, right? Uh, the shortest one would be around 50, I guess, right? Something like that. Okay, so that gives you a good idea of the page number you're looking at. However, just because you get the page number doesn't mean you understand the time needed. Okay, and that's kind of what we want to look at today. How much time are we talking about? So let's jump down to the next page and we kind of sum it all up here real nice. Come on down again. And here we have two nice little figures. And again, here we start talking about the same idea. It's almost the same exact idea, only now we're gonna add in some time. So let's look at the first picture there. The first picture we have is going to include on the y-axis is percentage of dissertation requiring less than given time. That's a little bit hard to understand, isn't it? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, make it a bigger there we go I got a nice big picture of it here and over here maybe I can zoom in too maybe you need to zoom in a little bit get that real nice and clear for you oh, this one doesn't zoom for me so we're talking about percentage of dissertation requiring less than given time 80% of dissertations require 12 to 20 <laughs> actual work months the median is 15 months 50% of dissertations take from 13 to 18 work months okay so again I would take this about one standard deviation over and you you can also keep in mind that the median and the mean differ and I think the main reason for the differing is when people take a long time, they take a really long time. And when they write a long thesis, they write a really long thesis, right? That's the, that's the key aspect to that. So short doesn't get any shorter because short is just short. Yeah, it's something you need to study up on for your research. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Let's we'll skip that for now. Just, uh, just keep that, mark that down maybe as a term to look up. So, so I think that everyone can agree with me from looking at the numbers here. When you write a long one, it's really long. When you take a long time, it takes a long time. But you cannot write a short one really short, right? Now, just to let you see this idea a little bit more clearly, this is related to your research. This is a mistake many students make. Although you've all, most of you have studied statistics or had statistics or are having statistics now, you often forget that the problems you're given in class are these nice distributions, normal distributions. But in reality, those distributions always bump up against the limit. In this case, the limit is zero. You cannot write a dissertation of zero pages, right? 
It's impossible. You see? But you can write one of 100, right? And from 100 to 110 is much easier than from 10 to 0. You follow me? So, in reality, when you measure your, your subject's responses for your research, you need to remember that lots of times those distribution curves are unusual because they have a limit, either a higher limit or a lower limit. In this case, are lower. you cannot write a dissertation of zero or less. So, if we take this and we move over about one standard deviation, then what are we talking about? Well, if we're looking here that the median is 15 months, dissertations take from 13 and a half to 18 months, maybe the standard deviation here is, I don't know, I'm just going to guess, because they didn't really give us a mean here. Did they give us a mean? Do we have a mean for the number of months? We got a median, 15 months, but there's no mean, right? So I'm going to guess maybe 15, six months standard deviation. That might be a little bit high, four months. Maybe four months standard deviation? Something like that? Anybody got a guess? Maybe four or five. All right. So. If we move this over, then we're saying that your master thesis will take how much? Uh, 10 to 12 months. That to me sounds absolutely correct. That to me sounds correct. From choosing your topic until you finish your defense uh, a year. That's correct. Now, does that mean no one can do it in six months? No, that means some people can do it in six months. This is the average right and some people will take longer right agreed mm -hmm. so I want to go at this very slowly because I want you all to have this sink into your heads because you need to really get your brain around this we're talking uh, 12 months in fact we call them work months 12 work months right so that means if right now you are talking to your, your, you're choosing your advisor. Right now you're choosing your advisor from most of our marketing students. Some of the other students, I don't, I don't know your situation. But for our marketing students, you choose your advisor now. You're beginning to think of a topic. By this time, one year later, by this time, one year later, you will be finishing your results. Because you need to defend by uh, June. Uh, you could defend earlier, but if you miss June, then you won't graduate until January, right? You have to defend again in January. So this is a very serious uh, time constraint. And what this is showing us right here very clearly is that, hey, you've got to get ready because this is how much time it takes. So I want everyone to pay attention to that. Now, this coming week, I'm going to ask you, maybe somebody already made some Gantt charts, we'll look today. But this week, I want you to seriously make a Gantt chart of your schedule. And I want you to use this as a guideline. One standard deviation over to the left, approximately. You can go faster, you can go slower, that's up to you. But I need to see your schedule. I need to see your Gantt chart. If you don't have a Gantt chart, you cannot really complete your thesis in an organized fashion. Remember what I told you uh, last week. When you're looking for your advisor, what are the three things you take with you? You take a research paper that is an example of your topic. You take a research paper that is an example of your methodology. And you take a Gantt chart. And if you take these three things that any professor in our department or in your department, they'll, they'll take you very serious. Now, they may say everything you've done is wrong. This is a bad topic. This is the wrong methodology. But they may say something like, oh, well, this regression methodology is not correct. You're going to have to use just a regular ANOVA. Well, that gives you an answer. Now, you go find another paper that uses uh, ANOVA, and then you bring that back and say, oh, I found one just like that. Can I use this? You see? Remember that you are 
uh, mastering your topic, right? You're not doing a PhD, so you do not have to think of something brand new or something unique. You can copy what other people have done. You just need to show that you can master the topic. Okay? So copying is not a problem. I mean, not copying the material. I mean copying the topic and the methodology. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't copy somebody's words. We're going to talk about that later. All right, so here we go. That's the schedule we're looking at. That's quite a challenge, I think, and I want everyone to get clear on it uh, starting today. Okay, I'm going to move a little bit further through our book, and I'm at page 22 now. So let me go ahead and move over to page 22. There we go. And we've got this little graphic here. What does this graphic here tell us? This is telling us approximately how much time you will need on each part, on each part of your research writing. I think that's pretty, pretty awesome, pretty very clear to you. Let's quickly review uh, some of this, if we may. Writing and editing and proofing, research and analysis, complete search of prior research, and topic adjustment. So you need to read this from the bottom up, right? You need to read this from the bottom up, right? So let's begin with the bottom. Topic adjustment and proposal, that's where you are now. That's where you are now. That will take approximately two months. Now remember I said about one standard deviation over and we're talking about the total, the total number we said reduced by about three or four months. So three or four months on, what was the total months? What was the months? What was the mean months I reduced that from? That was like uh, 18 months, right? Six, 16 or 18 months. So you need to take, what's the percentage of 12 of 16? It's about three quarters, right? So you need to reduce these numbers by about uh, one quarter to one third. So here it says about two months on your, on your topic adjustment. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a month and a week or a month and a half. And then complete search of prior research, one solid month. For you, we're talking maybe this would be three solid weeks. And then for research and analysis, that is collection of your data, seven months. So what are we talking about? Probably like four to five months. And then writing and editing, five months. So what are we talking about for you guys? We're talking about three and a half months. Does everyone, anyone disagree with me? Anyone have a counter opinion? <laughs> no? Anyone, anybody just want to cry right now and get it over with? Okay, so this, this book, and especially these charts I'm showing you, these are great. This is real. This is not an imagination. This is not made up. This is not fantasy. This is not just off Professor Warden's head. This is real. This is what averages really, really are. And this is my experience with my students and what I've seen of other professor students too. So this should be telling you, number one, you need to think. When do you need to begin and get serious? And number two, how much do you need to get serious for each part and when? So like right now, you need to get serious about your topic adjustment and proposal. You need to be really serious about that because you cannot do it later because later is too late. There's no more time later. Right? Okay, any questions about this chart? I love this chart. It's really wonderful. All right, so this coming week, 
I need you to make a Gantt chart that's going to follow this in some way. At least the percentages, 13% on your topic, 7% um, on your uh, literature review, and something like almost 50% on your research and analysis, and then about another 30% on your writing and proofreading. Okay, so I need you to make a Gantt chart this week. That's going to be our very clear assignment. Maybe some people already did it. That's good. I'm going to look at it today if you got it. But this coming week, I need you to make it really serious following this kind of guideline. Alright, so that's what I wanted to cover today with the time. So that's just about it for this, for this book today. Please read through those first few chapters of writing your dissertation so that you get much more detail. Of course, in this class, we're not going to cover every detail of that book. I'm just going to cover the general ideas because I want you to quickly understand you know, the most important concepts, especially today about time. Okay. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into the APA manual. So uh, we're going to take a break in a few minutes. If you're tired, I definitely suggest you drink some coffee or tea because the APA is so boring. But before we jump into the detail then, I just want to give you some overview. So if you're from marketing department, you must use the APA style. If you're from other departments, you may not be using the APA style. You may use um, MLA style, you may use uh, Harvard style, you may use any other kind of style, I don't know. However, many of the styles do carry over, they're very similar. And the main goal I want to show you is that when you're writing your research, you need to stick to the rules and the guidelines very, very closely. So please uh, open up your, your APA style guide and go to the table of contents first. So first we're going to look at the table of contents. Okay. This is our front page. I'm going to come down to our table of contents now. Oops. Okay. Now I'm going to say a few things that are really boring, but I please hope you can listen to me carefully because this is kind of important. Yeah. So everybody knows a table of contents. Right? I think there's nobody here that doesn't know the table of contents. Certainly everybody's familiar with video editing. So I go to the bookstore and there's like 20 books on video editing. There's one way I can tell which books are good. And that is the book that has the biggest index. That's the best book. So can anyone guess why it's not normal for Chinese books to have an index? Can anybody guess why? Can the index be bigger than the book? Well, no, because it's just ideas, right? If there's, if there's 1,000 ideas, the index is helping you find ideas. In Chinese, it would be 1,000 ideas, too. It's not really related to the, to the strokes or the characters. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I think, but I'm probably wrong, because making an index is really hard. It's really hard. In this book, somebody page by page, by line by line, had to say, this word is related to this idea, and this idea is related to that idea, and this goes here and here and here. It's really hard. Okay, so it is important for you to learn in your research. All nonfiction English books have a huge index. The bigger, the better. This is the way you find things quickly. So please do not come to your professor and say, I don't know how to do that. He says, well, should this line go, this is your p-value, and this is your note. Should the note go before your p-value or after your p-value, over the table or under the table? And you go, I don't know. That's impossible to know. No, 
you look here for NUT. In fact, I'll find it right now. M N NUT. I have to wear my glasses. I can't see anything. Okay, NUT. Oh, here. Prob here's NUT. There's different kinds of NUT. Author note, checklist note, general note, ordering note, probability note, spacing note, specific notes. Ooh, it's a lot of notes. I think I'm talking about probability note. Okay, probability note is on 3.70. Okay, 3.70. 3.70. 3.70. I'm getting close. I'm almost there. Oh, not yet. Yep, found it, okay, there we go, probability. And right there, it tells me, this is how you write the probability, and when you have a note, how does the note work? The note must be written this way, and it must come in a line underneath there. Three dot seven O. And it tells you very clearly how to write your note. So when you write a note in the APA style, you have to say the word note, N-O-T-E, with a period after it and a space after the period. And then you have to write your note after that. It has a period at the end of the note. And then they have an example on table 12, right? Here's an example table and here's an example note. And then it tells you, what if you have more than one note? How do you write more than one note? Okay, here's how you write more than one note. Okay, wonderful. So now we've learned the importance of index in English books. All your research books you get will have indexes. So when you go to the library and you get a book, you don't need to read the whole book. And you do not need to randomly search through the book. You use the index. All right? And you say, well, Professor Warren, I don't need to use the index. I'll just get the ebook and do a search. Okay, that's okay. But, but somebody who knows this book really, really well did it for me already. You see what I'm saying? They didn't use a computer and just say, just find everything. No, they said, this is related to this is related to this. They wrote the book. They know the book. I trust them by reading this. This helps me do things quick. All of your marketing books, all of your marketing textbooks, if they're in English from overseas, will have this. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back, and then we're going to get really boring, because we're going to start into the APA guidelines. Okay, so take a 10-minute break, and then we'll be back. Okay. Okay, so we're back, and now we're going to look at our individual students. Each student, if we have a little bit of time, today we're just going to basically practicing, make sure we're all up to speed. And so first we're looking at Wen's computer, and we can see here that she's installed the Gantt project, right? Okay, wonderful. And we can look at your times here, so we can see, we can see that you've labeled some of your parts here. This is <laughs> not easy for me to do. I'm trying to do this and stay on the video at the same time. Not easy. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so each of the tasks you have there, right? That's wonderful. Yeah. So the let's... Green, green color. Uh, sorry, the orange Blue, color. orange. Yeah, the orange color is for my uh, writing schedule. Okay, writing. Um, if I collect some... I still need to collect data. Yes. So I do like a select data. Okay. Other, yeah. Okay. Stuff. Wonderful. <laughs> so tell me, how did you change the color uh, to orange? Oh, okay. Here. Mm -hmm. you open it. Hold on. And then you can change the color here. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. That's one by one changing the color. Okay. Uh, can you change the color based on the whole task? Yes. I think you can change the color over here, can't you? So the whole task becomes one color. I'm not sure, that's okay. Oh, I'm, not sure. I'm just saying, if you check it one by one, that's one way. Another way, I think, is you can set the whole task to be one color. Okay. But I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but you can try it and see. Okay. That would save you trouble, right? Okay. 
All right, very good. So uh, one, that looks great. So can we pass the line on to Michelle now? Yes. Thank you. And again, we're gonna take that VGA cable and move it around. Okay, purple. I love the purple. That's great. Can I have the HDMI? Yes, yes. You have HDMI out. Let me give you that. There you go. This is an HDMI adapter. Thank you. Very good. Okay, I'm going to... Hell, oh, awesome. Wow, very clear too and colorful. Could you tell me, Michelle, how did you change your colors? The same way? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh, okay. All right, and do your colors have special meaning? Yeah, um, same, same part of the message, I use the same color. Okay, all right. And I see here that you have seminar, end of second seminar. How did you put the notes in here? Milestones. So these the milestone, a milestone. Okay. I love what you just did. Can you make that zoom in and zoom out again? And tell us how are you doing that? Use my mouse. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and just scroll up and scroll down. Scroll up and scroll down yeah. on the mouse. Yeah. And then you can use your mouse to grab the time yeah. and move it yeah. back and <coughs> forth. Awesome. Okay, so um, that's great. Milestone. So can you can you tell me, Michelle, what does a mi how does a milestone help? Um, I use the milestone to show the actual end of the date. What have what I have to do like the like seminar. So it's like seminar. Yes, on the specific date. This is May. May. Right. First. Okay. And then end of second semester. So that's there. Yeah. End of second semester. Okay. Now, usually milestones, usually a milestone will say something is done. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be like yeah. chapter one done, mm -hmm. chapter two complete, chapter three complete. And so milestones are a great way to do that. All right. <clears throat> now, I'd like you to do one thing for me. Could you uh, tell me what is this purple line here? It's hard for me to read from this angle. What's this one right here? This is my. I have to finish my methodology part okay. this period. Mm -hmm. All right. And then what's the blue one down there? Blue line is the questionnaire. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's the one after that one? Um, this is the uh, first version of my questionnaire. Ah. And I have to uh, consult with my advisor. Sure. Mm -hmm. What a great idea. So in here you have first version, second version. Now, your literature review writing, that's one thing. Yeah. Your, your survey design, part one, part two, that's another thing. Hmm. You can, these are not really, kind of related. I mean, it's hard to make your survey without reading yeah. the literature, right? But one thing's for sure, these two are related. Hmm. You cannot do this one without this one. Yeah. So can you take your mouse and click on there and then pull out? and then put that line there. What oh. you've just done is, you said that this one needs this one. Yes. Okay. Now, I would like you to move this one. You, you can grab the end. Yes, yes, oh, it's very hard. To get it just right, to turn to an arrow, just, I want you to pull the end to be longer time. Like, let's say that the time, yeah, 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 that's a good idea, make it, yeah, yeah, you got it. Pull it, now let go, let go. And you see what happened? So this is the key part of the program. This is dependent on this, and then later you can change. A Gantt chart, a Gantt chart, things like milestones, they are not made that you must do it. The reason for having a Gantt chart is you can quickly see if this changes, how does everything else change? Some things don't change. Some things must change. 
This is really, really helpful for you every week. Now, Michelle, can you, I'm sorry to put all the pressure on you, but, but I think you can grab this, another arrow here, or maybe from this end. And yeah, now, now you got it, now pull. Ah, that's cool. So it's very hard to get the mouse just oh, right. So I can. Yes, percentage done. Percentage done. Okay. You can also make it longer or shorter, but some, it's very hard for me to get the arrow just right. I always, very difficult, drives me crazy. But you see, you can grab it and make it longer, shorter. You can also get your arrow just right. The arrow changes to percentage and you can pull the percentage and it shows percentage done. There's a really awesome way to keep track of your uh, work. Great, good job. You guys make very pretty GAN charts. My GAN charts are ugly compared to yours. Okay, <laughs> all right, ploy. Let's just pass that over. If you have the uh, HDMI, that's easy. If you have a VGA, you can do that instead. That's a good input. So here we have the Gantt chart all empty, all fresh already. What I would do is I would go to the book we just looked at writing your dissertation, writing your thesis, right? Yeah, try to keep it steady would be good on the connection. Okay, there we go. Writing your dissertation and then look at those times we had, right? How much time does it take? And then begin from your goal, which is my goal is to defend on June 10. Okay, then you work backwards. Okay, writing, uh, proofreading, this takes uh, seven weeks. Uh, this section takes five weeks. This takes ten weeks. Data collection and analysis is, is uh, a month and a half. You work backwards. If you work backwards, you know what will happen? You'll keep going back, 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 back. And then what will happen? You're going to be before today. And you're going to go, oh my God, I'm already five weeks late. <laughs> All right, that's what always happens, okay? Okay, so let's go over to Sharon.